Why are they so happy? At first, I thought this country looked miserable, terrible, and awful, and I wouldn't want to live there. But then I realized, hey, I was looking at Canada. Moving on to another cold, dark, and isolated place, I still thought the same, only to find out it's actually Finland, the happiest country in the world. It's surprising how it stands out as the happiest, way ahead of Denmark and others on the list, which makes you wonder, if Finland is this happy, how unhappy must other places be? Hello and welcome back to Luxury Explore. Today we'll be delving into what makes Finland so happy and try to see if we can learn anything on how to lift our spirits and find happiness ourselves. Are they happy because of their climate? You might be wondering how climate could possibly make anyone happy, especially considering Finland's harsh weather with its blizzards, endless rain, long dark winters, and an abundance of mosquitoes. Interestingly, most of the world's happiest countries are cold, with Australia being the happiest warm country ranked only 11th. This suggests that perhaps the cold has some benefits. However, this idea isn't consistent across the board, as warm Costa Rica is happier than cooler Britain, and hotter Saudi Arabia outdoes Italy in happiness rankings. So, it might not be the weather itself, but the environment that plays a role in happiness. Finland, for example, is lush with forests covering two-thirds of the nation, which is unusual for the modern day, as most people live in urban areas. Yet, Finnish cities are full of green spaces, including parks and nature reserves, and Finns highly value being close to nature, alongside efficient transportation. This is possible because Finnish cities are not densely populated, ensuring nature is never far away. This connection to nature within urban environments could be a key factor in their happiness. Maybe it's their culture. Finland is largely made up of Finnish people, with the majority being Lutheran and a smaller percentage of Sami people in the north, making it a pretty uniform country. Education and innovation are big parts of their culture, with nearly everyone having at least a bachelor's degree and everyone being able to read despite the complexity of their language. They value equality at work, which is shown through their flat organizational structures, the freedom to make decisions, good job benefits, and a work week that averages just 35 hours. However, being late is frowned upon as it could damage the strong trust they place in each other. This deep sense of trust might stem from their long history of cold weather and being under foreign rule for six centuries, making them depend on each other for survival. It's also possible their trust comes from having low crime rates and a stable economy. Or it could be security that makes the Finns so happy. Worrying about wars, burglaries, or being attacked can harm your mental well-being. Finland, however, is remarkably safe and stable. Since the 1990s, they've cut their crime rate in half. Poverty is almost non-existent at 0.2%. Everyone has access to electricity, and people live very long lives. The most common crime? Traffic violations. With a population of 5.5 million expected to decrease slightly to 5 million by 2100. The drop is not as severe as in other European countries, suggesting a minor impact on the economy and maintaining overall happiness. Finland is also geopolitically secure being part of the European Union and protected by NATO, surrounded by wealthy and stable neighbors like Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Germany, and Estonia. Russia, however, poses a constant concern due to its proximity and historical tensions. Despite the size difference, Finland has managed well against Russian pressures and even applied to join NATO in 2022 for added security showing they're not easily intimidated and value their safety. How about their economy? Another key factor to consider is financial stability. Can money truly make you happy? There are two points to consider here. 
First, Finland hasn't always been prosperous. For a long time, it was overlooked and impoverished, barely making ends meet through agriculture in its challenging climate. Under foreign rule first by Sweden and then by Russia, Finland had some degree of self-governance, which helped establish a foundation of trust and legal stability crucial for economic development. Despite its limited natural resources, mainly water and forests, Finland managed to carve out an economic niche for itself. The country relied heavily on its timber industry, which became even more critical as it began to industrialize in the 19th century to supply lumber to Russia. This dependence on wood defined much of its economy and foreign relations until the mid-20th century. However, the winter war with Russia in 1939 was a significant setback, resulting in the loss of life, land, and the need to pay reparations. This period highlighted the struggles and resilience in Finland's path to economic stability, showing that while money is a significant factor in happiness, the journey to financial security can be fraught with challenges. During the Cold War, Finland chose to remain neutral to avoid past conflicts, leading towards the West but avoiding alliances like NATO, the EEC, and the Marshall Plan. Despite this, Finland traded timber with the West and resumed trading with the Soviet Union, especially in energy. The profits from these trades were invested in manufacturing industries, producing machines, elevators, ships, and paper machines, primarily for the Soviet market. With this new income, Finland adopted the Nordic welfare model, focusing on education, social and health care, and other benefits, aiming for a well-researched and innovation-driven economy. However, the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s severely impacted Finland's economy leading to a significant depression due to the sudden drop in trade, currency devaluation, and banking crisis. Recovering in the 2000s, Finland shifted its focus from traditional industries to technology and innovation, contributing globally recognized products like Nokia phones, Linux, the first internet browser, SMS, Angry Birds, and Clash of Titans. This transformation wasn't overnight, but the result of over 150 years of building stable institutions and focusing on innovation, leading to Finland's current status as an economically secure and technologically advanced nation. So, is it welfare that makes them so happy? Finland enjoys a high level of security and welfare, which likely reduces stress among its citizens. Unlike Norway, which funds its welfare through substantial oil revenues, Finland lacks such resources. Instead, it relies on taxing industries developed over the last 150 years. Finland imposes one of the world's highest tax rates, with personal income tax nearly at 57% and sales tax in the top 10 globally at about 25%. Despite the high taxes, Finland's government manages its finances well, setting strict budget limits each electoral term often resulting in a surplus. However, the 1990s depression and the 2008 financial crisis did lead to significant debt, which has been challenging to manage as the population ages and the tax base shrinks. The taxes fund a comprehensive welfare system, including pensions, free education, unemployment benefits, healthcare, family benefits, and subsidized housing, among other services. This extensive support system builds trust among Finns in their government's ability to deliver services effectively, a stark contrast to less developed countries where promised services often fail to materialize. The question of whether the high tax rate is worth the benefits provided is subjective, but it appears that for Finns, this arrangement contributes to their overall happiness and sense of security. All right, we've talked a lot about how great Finland is, but it's time to look at their difficulties and challenges. Firstly, Finland's population is decreasing, which puts a strain on their welfare system, increasing debt, and reduces investment. Secondly, like many other countries, Finland is experiencing a housing crisis with rapidly rising house prices. Thirdly, 
tension with Russia, a key energy supplier, have led to a significant increase in electricity prices, especially after Finland lost access to Russian gas. This has forced Finland to rely more on coal and wood for power, which feels outdated. Fourthly, despite the overall happiness, mental health issues and substance abuse are more prevalent in Finland compared to other EU countries, possibly due to social isolation or cultural factors. Lastly, Finland's economy faced setbacks when global competitors impacted major industries like paper and Nokia, though the country has managed to diversify its economy since then. So to achieve happiness, it's essential to have openness, safety, financial stability, and above all, trust. You need to trust your government, the people around you, companies, school, heck, even your dog. You need to trust that your future is secure and that there will always be someone to support you in times of need. In short, trust is a foundation of Finland's happiness. And that ends our episode for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, do hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to keep posted for more videos. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.